What's up everyone? Welcome to Lowering Expectations. Thanks for lowering your expectations and hanging out with me here. I do appreciate it. In today's video, we are going to be unboxing this Viber mini lathe and taking a close up look at it. This is actually going to be part one of a three part video series where we first do an unboxing. In the second video in the series, we are going to use Viber's upgraded metal gear kit to upgrade the lathe. And then in part three, that's where it gets really interesting. I am going to walk my buddy Dustin through some safety procedures as well as basic operation. At the end of that, if he's able to successfully make a part without ripping any fingers off, I'm gonna send him home with this lathe. If you follow my Droll Arsenal YouTube channel, you will probably already know that I do in fact have a metal turning lathe and I get quite a bit of use out of it. This sort of thing has become way more accessible to the average person over the last 10 or 15 years because the prices have come down substantially. I asked Beaver to send me this mini lathe for a couple of reasons. The first one being that I wanted to show you guys that uh, Beaver does in fact have some machining tools on their website. They also have some wood turning lathes and wood turning tools if that's the sort of thing that you're into, but uh, we're here to talk about the metal stuff today. They have some lathes that are a little bit bigger and a little bit smaller than the one that I will be showing you. And they also have some milling tools. They have lathe chucks, ER32 collets, indexable tooling. They also have milling vices, dividing heads, turntables, and all sorts of other stuff. So if you're already into turning and milling, then check out the link in the description below and you might find something that interests you. I purchased my very first lathe about 12 years ago because I'm a tinkerer and I really like new tools. However, shortly after getting my lathe, I realized that it was extremely handy to have around the shop. I've made all sorts of things over on my Joel Arson on YouTube channel, and I'm not gonna tell you guys about every one of those things, but I am gonna tell you a pretty cool story. Making chips on a metal lathe is extremely satisfying and once you have one you will find yourself getting into all sorts of projects that you would have otherwise never even considered. As an example, say it's Saturday afternoon, your neighbor's being a nice guy, he's using his snowblower to clear snow in front of your house, when all of a sudden, bam, he hits a chunk of ice and breaks his shear pin. He doesn't have a spare, gonna have to wait until Tuesday to get a new one and that just isn't gonna do. You pop into your garage, grab a scrap piece of metal and a few minutes later, you've got a new shear pin. You're the hero, you've saved the day. From my previous experience with Viver, everything that I've gotten from them has been packaged really well. I've never gotten anything damaged from them. I'm really curious to see how this is gonna turn out because it is fairly heavy and, uh, well, shipping companies aren't always gentle. So let's crack this thing open and see if it's destroyed or if it's uh, a thumbs up. That's actually not the story that I was going to tell you guys though. I was going to tell you a story about Megan's boss restoring an antique dresser. She had a screw missing from one of the handles and nobody could match up the thread. It was some sort of weird British thing and none of the hardware stores, none of the bolt and screw stores in the city could even figure out what she had, let alone provide her with one. In an afternoon, I was able to make a screw. Not only did I feel incredibly accomplished from making this thing that nobody else could come up with, but after trying to turn it down several times, I finally had to accept a $100 gift card for a single screw. Probably the most expensive screw that I've ever sold anyone. It's a cute little chip pan. That's cute. We'll take a look at the contents later. Honestly, I was concerned. I was worried I was going to open this and just be like, oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't see any damage. It looks good so far. I've seen these unboxed by other companies, other manufacturers, and I don't recall seeing these big blocks of styrofoam. Once again, Viver looks like Viver packaged their stuff quite well. This lathe came packaged extremely well, bolted down to a wooden crate with some formed styrofoam blocks strategically placed at both ends. There was no damage other than this sticker that was peeled up on the top and that will be easily fixed with some crazy glue. 
We got the chuck key, of course, that uh, works in a three jaw chuck. It does have a spring in it to make sure that it doesn't stay in the chuck. This is on there for safety because if you turn the lathe on with the key in the chuck, it will throw it across the room. It could seriously injure somebody or damage something. I would recommend you leave your spring on, but I am taking this one and throwing it away. We have these handles. One of them goes on the tailstock wheel and one of them goes over here on the apron wheel so that you can actually make these things function. We have one for the cross slide, screws in here. We have some jaws for the chuck. We have a manual with a glass tube fuse. Interesting. An oil bottle. We have this bag of accessories and parts. We've got rubber feet for the bottom of the lathe. What is this? Oh, this is the, the uh, dead center. <laughs> Nice. We've got a whole bunch of gears. Dustin has already purchased a metal gear kit from Beaver and we will be switching that out. We have some wrenches, and Allen keys and some bolts that are very likely to hold these rubber feet onto the bottom of the lathe. Now we've got to clean up this mess, install those handles. I guess we'll install the rubber feet and then we'll plug it in and try to fire it up. If you're interested in purchasing your very own mini lathe and would like to support my channel, there is an affiliate link as well as a discount code in the description below. Even if you're heading over to their website just to browse something else, use that link and that way they know I sent you. Let's take a look at some of the controls. We have our forward and reverse switch over here. This is the speed control, variable speed control. And it controls the speed of the spindle. This is our on and off switch and uh, emergency stop. There's one more piece of safety gear on this lathe, which is this acrylic or plastic cover. This is very commonly removed because it uh, obscures your view of the chuck and uh, doesn't really do a whole lot as far as provide safety. Just like any other lathe, we've got the handle that controls the apron left and right. We've got the handle that controls the cross slide in and out. And we also have our compound handle, which moves the compound at whatever angle you've chosen. These tool holders are very commonly used because they're economical and they just work. They're not the most convenient thing. And for that reason, they are a fairly common upgrade. Down here we have the handle for the half nut. When you move this handle down, it engages the half nut onto the lead screw. And when you turn the spindle on, that moves the apron back and forth. This is an automatic feed back and forth so that you don't have to use this manual hand wheel. On the back side of the lathe, we have where the power cord goes in, as well as the handle that changes the direction of the lead screw in relation to the spindle. What I mean by that is when you have the lathe in forward, ordinarily when you engage the half nut, the apron will move towards the chuck. But if you put this handle in reverse and then you engage the half nut with the spindle in forward, the apron will move in the opposite direction. At the tail end of the lathe, we have what they call the tailstock. 
There is a handle here to lock the quill in place. When you tighten this handle, the quill can't move. When you loosen it and turn this handle, the quill will extend or retract depending on which way you turn it. This handle here is used to move the tailstock back and forward or to actually lock or unlock the tailstock. You can slide it to where you want it or where you need it to be. And then you move the handle and lock the tailstock back in place. As with any of these mini lays, it is not perfect out of the box. I'm gonna walk you guys through some of the stuff that is less than perfect that I've already noticed about this. Most of this stuff is very easily upgradable or changeable, but uh, I just wanna let you guys know what you're getting into if you get one of these. One of the first things that I noticed right away is that the chip pan has a couple of problems. One is it has some gaps along here. Probably not a big deal. You're not gonna be running flood coolant on this thing, but it has a couple of spot welds holding it in place back here, but it's not fully welded and there's some substantial gaps. The next problem is the way that it's held on. If you loosen the handle for the tailstock, it actually makes contact with the tip guard. Some of this stuff is probably just adjustments but the guard actually makes contact with the side of this uh, switch housing. And the handles, as with all of these mini lathes, it doesn't have any way to actually tighten the handle on. There's no slot for a screwdriver and there's no flats for a wrench. The last thing that I noticed is the feed direction selector actually has very shallow holes. This is gonna be impossible for the camera to see very likely, but when you wanna change the direction of the carriage or the feed, you pull out on this handle and you move it to a different position and then release the handle. And in order for it to lock in place, there is supposed to be little divots or holes for a pin to fall into. And those holes are very shallow. If you've spent any time researching mini lays, then you will know that people do a ton of upgrades to these things. I already talked about upgrading the gears at the intro of this video, and we will be doing that in the next video in this series. Another very common upgrade for these mini lathes and any other lathe is a quick change tool holder or quick change tool post. That will allow you to change tools without having to loosen any of these bolts. As I've already mentioned, these handles don't have any good way to tighten them. There's no spot for a wrench and there's no spot for a screwdriver. For this reason, this is the first thing that people build with their new mini lathe. We are going to use this lathe with the rubber feet installed, but ideally you would actually have this bolted down to a bench or a piece of plywood or something. As you guys can see, this thing is not very stable. So I would advise that you bolt it down securely before using it. I've been tinkering around a little bit with the Viver mini lathe off camera just to kind of get the feel for it. And I managed to turn this aluminum shaft down. This is a one inch shaft and I turned it down to 14 millimeter and 10 millimeters. I put some threads on this using the lathe. This is a 10 by 1.25. And then I was going to thread this section uh, to 14 by 1.5. And that's where I actually ran into some problems. I mentioned to you guys earlier in the video that the detents on the selector on the back weren't very deep. And when I started to try to cut this at that pitch, it actually caused the lever to pop out of place. So I'm actually going to do a modification where that pin doesn't come to a point it's going to actually be a pin that goes into a hole. What I've done there is used the tip of the detent or the tip of the selector to actually mark where the new holes are gonna be. I'm guessing this is probably gonna be pretty easy. And yeah, that was super easy. Okay, I've already removed the nut, so... Okay, this just screws apart like this. That's pretty neat. Okay. 
We are at 3.5 millimeters. I'm gonna leave it at 3.5 and we're also gonna leave the sharp tip on there cause that's gonna help guide us into the hole. And that's exactly what we want. I've got a spacer, which is actually just a file in between the gear body here and the gear so that I can get this exactly where it needs to be. So now let's drill our hole. We'll hold this up into place. Hmm, that apparently is not very thick. I've now completed the modification to the feed selector lever. It was very easy and it locks into place extremely securely. I'm not gonna go into detail on how I did this in this video, but in the next video in this series where I upgrade this lathe to metal gears, I will go into some detail because I actually kinda screwed up a little bit. I'll walk you guys through some of the stuff that I did to hopefully make sure you don't screw up in the same way I did. It still works, but uh, there was a bit of a mishap. So it quite clearly does cut steel. I'm not going to film all of this. I'm going to turn this down and actually try threading some steel. Okay, that is good. So now I'm going to touch up the shoulder. We'll face it off. Before I can actually cut thread, I'm going to need to put a thread cutting tool in here. The only thread cutting tool I have is one that I made about 10 years ago. So what I'm gonna do is come in at a reasonable speed and uh, try to do a scratch pass. We'll see if we're close enough, and indeed we are. And if I hold it up to the lines here, I can see it is exactly 1.25. And we are going to advance the compound 10 thousandths for this first cut. And then after that, we'll probably settle in at 5 thousandths or maybe even a little bit less. But for this one, we're going to try 10. See what happens. <laughs> When we get close to the end, I'm gonna turn it by hand so that I don't run the tool into the part and either break the tool, break the mill, or break the part. We're gonna turn the cross slide out, put the lathe in reverse, turn the speed knob up, oh, turn the speed knob up, and back out. Now what I'm gonna do is go back into zero on the cross slide and we're just gonna keep repeating this process. I'm gonna take five thousandths this time. close folks it goes on but it's a bit tight I'm gonna take a spring pass and see if it takes anything That's a nice thread right there, folks. That is a beautiful thing. Oh yeah. Okay. Just gonna touch up the face of the threads here so they're not super sharp.
Nice. That's a beautiful thing, folks, right there. I am super happy about that. There's something that is very satisfying about turning down metal and making your own threads. This isn't terribly efficient as far as time goes, and I did have to do a modification to the lathe. I'm not sure why they had that pin at a point. It doesn't make any sense to me, so I think that's probably a fairly necessary modification if you're going to do any uh, fairly heavy threading. That just about does it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know I had an absolute blast playing around with this little lathe. It took me on a trip down memory lane to when I got my first lathe. I watched so many YouTube videos, did a ton of research, and I know that despite some of this lathe's shortcomings, I would have been tickled pink to get my greasy hands on this thing 10 or 12 years ago. Other than the modifications that I've already mentioned in this video, we did have to do some adjustments, and this is gonna be the case regardless of what lathe or mill you buy. This is a really great way to familiarize yourself with your machine and just kind of figure out how all of the components work. It is not terribly uncommon for people who buy these mini lays or even the one that I purchased to completely tear it down, clean everything off, put it back together and adjust everything before you even use it. The few things that come to mind on this particular lay that we adjusted is the alignment of the tailstock, we adjusted the gibs on both the cross slide and the compound, and we also replaced some washers on the motor bolts because they were a little thin and they were starting to bend. In the next video in this series, I will go into some more upgrades on the mill, focusing mainly on upgrading to metal gears. As you guys can see from the footage in this video, it does work perfectly fine, but there is a chance that you could snap off those plastic gears and so it is fairly common to upgrade to these steel ones. This kit is available on the Viver website as well as the lathe itself. If you're interested in one of these lathes, once again, there's an affiliate link and a discount code in the description below. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Damn airplane.